Imagine you're walking down the street on your way home. Maybe you're walking home from school, work, or a friend's house. You stayed longer than you had planned, and now it's gotten late. The sun has just set, the light beginning to fade from the horizon as the moon rises to take its place. Your path is lit only by the street lights you pass every so often, spread out much further than you remembered them being. The street is eerily empty, quiet as the grave, and you shove your hands in your pockets and start to pick up your pace. The sooner you get home and away from this darkening street, the better. As you walk, you could swear you hear footsteps behind you, walking in time with yours. You keep your gaze straight ahead, afraid to turn around, afraid of what you might see if you do. You wonder if it's just your mind playing tricks on you, and there really is nothing there. You feel a chill creep down your spine, nervous sweat beating on your forehead, your heart pounding against your ribcage. You glance over your shoulder, and your heart jumps into your throat. There is someone there. A woman wearing a long red coat and a surgical mask that covers the lower half of her face. Excuse me, she calls out to you. She looks young, normal, and relatively harmless. She might be in trouble and looking for some help. Perhaps she's lost and needs directions. Yes, you respond. She takes a step closer to you, her eyes staring deep into yours. Am I pretty? she asks. What an odd thing to ask a stranger. In the dim evening light, however, she does look very beautiful. So, you answer truthfully. Yes, you are. You turn away from her and resume your walk home, but she quickly steps around you and cuts you off. What about now? she asks. Her hand lifts to her face and she tears away the surgical mask, revealing her mouth. It is slit from ear to ear in a jagged, bloody line. You let out a shriek of horror at the grotesque sight and turn to run away. Before you can get even one step further, she grabs you by the arm, holding you in place. You struggle to break her grip, but she's surprisingly strong. You can't get away, no matter how hard you try. All you can do is watch, helpless as she pulls a large pair of scissors from the pocket of her coat and lifts the blades to your face. She opens the scissors and forces a blade into the corner of your mouth. Your vision goes red with pain, then black. In the morning, your neighbors will find your corpse lying on the sidewalk in a crumpled heap, mouth slid open from ear to ear in a permanent, gory smile. They will never know that your poor, doomed soul just had an encounter with the Kuchisaki Ona, the slit-mouthed woman, and you never stood a chance. The Kuchisaki Ona is a vengeful spirit, the ghost of a woman who died violently after her mouth was slit open now, unable to rest after her tragic end, she stalks the streets of Japan, wearing a surgical mask to cover her open wounds. She finds people walking alone, often after dark, and asks them a simple question. Watashi kirei, meaning, am I beautiful? If they answer yes, she removes her mask and demands they answer the question again. Whether her victim answers yes or no the second time, the end result is the same. Death. If they say no, or simply scream in understandable terror, she grabs them and mutilates them, slashing their face from ear to ear. If they answer yes at the sight of her disfigured face, which she considers to be a lie, she will let them go, or so they think. The victim makes it home, lulled into a false sense of security, not knowing that she has followed them and is now lying in wait. Later that night, when they have finally settled in for a restful sleep after their harrowing ordeal, she butchers them ripping them open until they are barely recognizable. There is only one way to save yourself from the wrath of the slit-mouthed woman, and that is to be as polite and straight-faced as possible. And, unluckily for us, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on how to definitively avoid her wrath. Some say that when she asks if she is beautiful, her would-be victim should answer, you're okay, or you're average. This will confuse her for long enough that they can run away. Others claim that giving her an offering of money or hard candy will appease her. While either might be correct, it's probably best to keep some loose change and hard candies in your pockets when you walk home alone, just in case. So where did she come from? A violent, vengeful spirit like the slit-mouthed woman doesn't come out of nowhere. There are a few different versions of her origin story, each with the same gruesome ending. In one, dating all the way back to the Japanese Edo period, which took place from the 17th to 19th centuries, she was the beautiful wife of a samurai who suspected her of having an affair. 
She was, in fact, in love with another man and planning to run away with him. On the night of her escape, her husband discovered her. In a jealous rage, he attacked her, slicing her face into her signature slit-mouthed wound before cutting off her head completely. After carving up her face, legend has it that he said, who will think you're beautiful now? Another version of the story insists that her injuries are the result of a horribly botched plastic surgery. Inspired by her two older sisters who had undergone surgery with great success, she decided to have a procedure done as well. Something went terribly wrong though, and she ended up dead with her mouth ripped open. Whatever the cause of her death was, the result is the same, a vengeful spirit with her mouth sliced at the corners, taking out her eternal rage on anyone she encounters. Just as there are many variations on her origin story, there are also several versions of her appearance which change depending on the region of Japan the story is told in. In Edogawa-ku in Tokyo, she carries a red umbrella in addition to wearing a long red coat. In Tamagawa in Tokyo, she is described as being covered in dirt. In Hajioji and Kogobunji cities in Tokyo, she wears a kimono. Her weapons can vary as well. Sometimes she wields a pair of scissors, sometimes a sickle, a knife, a razor, or an axe. Though folklorists have traced the story of the Kujisaki Ono all the way back to the Edo period, it experienced a massive resurgence in the 1970s. In 1978, a rumor began going around in the area outside the town of Yatsu that an old woman had spotted a strange woman standing in the corner of her garden with her mouth slit. Before long, the rumor began to spread, and within six months, nearly the entire country had heard about this strange, frightening figure. Newspapers and TV stations even began covering the story. The legend spread especially quick amongst children who were terrified of walking home from school after dark when there was the possibility of a vengeful ghost lurking around every corner. Schools even began to have a problem with children bringing beko ame, a traditional hard candy, to school in order to protect themselves on their walk home. In certain areas, such as the Fukushima and Kanagawa prefectures, police cars were even sent out on patrols to keep an eye out for any suspicious figures. In areas like Hokkaido, neighborhood watch groups were formed to make sure children got home from school untouched. By the middle of the summer of 1979, the stories of the slit-mouthed woman had all but disappeared from the public consciousness. Many attribute this to the fact that children were out of school and no longer whispering scary stories amongst themselves about the horrors that might await them on their dark walks home. However, even though she was no longer making headlines, the Kuchisaki Ona had made her mark on the culture and would never truly go away. The story of the slit-mouthed woman has seen several resurgences since her first boom in the 1970s. In the 1990s, with the increased popularity of plastic surgery, as well as massive media coverage of surgical failures, the plastic surgery gone wrong version of the legend began to circulate. This modern update breathed new life into the story, frightening a whole new generation of children walking home from school in the dark. It now appears that the slit-mouthed woman may not even be confined to Japan, or that other apparitions of similar nature exist in other countries too. Variations on the story have appeared all across the world, such as in South Korea, where a version of the story warns of a woman with a red mask who asks the same question, am I pretty? Unlike the Japanese version of the tale, the only way to survive an encounter with this red masked woman is to say nothing and run away as fast as you can. Professor of folklore Ikura Yoshiyuki believes the Kuchisake Onna to be a perfect example of an urban legend, fueled by word of mouth and mass hysteria, as well as one of the only urban legends that is completely unique to Japan, or at least it was before the story spread. He particularly attributes the recent resurgence of the Kuchisake Ona and other urban legends to the online horror community. On the subject, he says, I think people have a playful element of make-believe in mind as they contribute to creating scary tales or making references to mysterious happenings around the world. He goes on to elaborate on the shifting nature of stories as they spread from culture to culture. A folklore tradition in places like Okinawa, Taiwan, South Korea, and China says that evil spirits can only travel in a straight line. So, the South Korean Kuchisake Ona can turn corners or climb stairs. So, perhaps the Kuchisake Ona is simply the product of the power of storytelling when mixed with fear. Or, perhaps there really is a vengeful spirit stalking the streets of Japan, just waiting to spot someone walking alone so she can corner them and ask that same deadly question. Perhaps we'll never know for sure, but if a strange woman approaches you on a shadowy, empty street, it's probably best to keep your distance and don't comment on her looks.